Good evening, everybody. If I can ask you as we begin our Palm Sunday liturgy, if you could please rise and stand, uh, stand and face the back of the church. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and by charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps. So that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And I ask you to please raise your palms in the air for blessing. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And this evening, we hear a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it and will be sent it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Please join in singing our opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 143.
As we enter into our Holy Week together as community, we acknowledge our sins first and ask for the Lord's mercy. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take the flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet, the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Praise you, you who fear the Lord. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion reading this evening. You can follow along in your books and participate as the part of the crowd. And of course, this is a longer reading, so if you can't stand throughout the entire thing, feel free to be seated as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Jesus O Lord. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to, <coughs> excuse me, and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why is there in this place the perfume of oil? They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into a city and a man will meet you, carrying a water jar. 
follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, saying the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen. I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that it were, if it were possible the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then at, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, and you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed them at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin 
kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and it began again to say to the bystanders, once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you were talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for him instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. <laughs> Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them and, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with Hail, King of the Jews. and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Lord, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. Please kneel. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joses, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and had ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The big news earlier in this week was doctored photos. We all saw it on the news in the 24-hour news cycle that we have of the princess posting pictures that may have been doctored. And then we heard gossip after gossip and news articles about this scandal and that scandal and all sorts of things going around. Everybody had an opinion. I'm sure that we've even shared stories of why would she have done that? What is she thinking? She must have this, that, and the other thing. Well, you know, it's just erupted. And then yesterday we find out, yeah, she has cancer. Silence from the news media, of course. It's, it's, there should be apologies you know, stacked up this high to her of all that went around. And we look in our society, yes, guess what? Doctored pictures. There needs to be a a front that, yes, everything is fine, leave me alone. There's a thing of perfection. I feel so bad for the royal family and people like that because they know how the mob scene can get. 
They want us to be transparent, but guess what? Everybody has their own opinion. They, they don't, just leave them alone. They don't know anything. But the mob scene, we can get into it. We've, all, we've probably shared stories about something as, as dumb as all of this. And I hope that everybody does pray for, for Princess Kate as she, as she makes her recovery, but also realize what mob scenes can do and what awful things can come out of people's mouths instead of being there for love, care, and compassion and realizing that, yes, there is suffering in the world. Hopefully, we can walk out and be exposed because we are all weak. We all have our own sinfulness. We all have our own weaknesses. But we're all afraid to. So we doctor up our photos so that nobody can see because, again, people are just there to attack rather than give us the love, care, and compassion, which hopefully we all are called to do to one another. We read the Passion story every year when it comes to Palm Sunday, and we realize that's where God is. God resides in suffering. God resides in all of human suffering. And we know when we have a family member who is sick and we have the opportunity to care and love them and get down and dirty, if you will, and, and get into their chaos, that's where true love is, and that's where we find God. We don't find God in the superficial. We don't find God in the plastic. We find God in the getting down and dirty, entering into somebody else's suffering, somebody entering into our own suffering. That's where we learn how to love. That's how we learn of the gifts that the Lord has given us to be able to minister with true care, with true compassion, and with true love. But through all of this, it doesn't end there. And that's why we gather here. We don't gather as a people of misery. We just realize that this is life. And we need to be real. We need to be authentic with our faith and our life because we realize that through all of this, the cross leads to the glory of the resurrection. The passion that we celebrate this week, the intricacies of what we're going to celebrate on Holy Thursday and on Good Friday, hopefully brings us to a deeper and deeper realization of the depth of the love of God. God could have just stayed there, you know, and we could have just honored and worshipped him as that perfect but no, he came to us, and as we hear in the prophet Isaiah, all the prophecies of, of the suffering servant. And that's who we honor and adore, is our God who came among us, who suffered for us, who was mocked and jeered and all the stuff by the crowd, and showed us that that's what leads to God, that leads to the glory of the resurrection. So hopefully we can see ourselves in this story somewhere. And if we're part of the crowd in our entire lives and not recognizing the sufferings of, 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 of one, of individuals, then maybe that's a time for us to reset and say, okay, no, I need to, to reset myself of what true um, authentic faith is all about. What true authentic love is all about. Now in the liturgies that are coming up this week, they are the best the Catholic Church has. So the Catholic Church for the Holy Triduum on Holy Thursday on Good Friday and the Great Easter Vigil, the symbolism, uh, the, the thought-provoking the thought and the faith-provoking of what, of what the liturgies do, I hope that we can, can come and journey uh, through those together. Holy Thursday is always special. Um, as a priest, it's the institution of the priesthood. That's the Last Supper. When Jesus actually said those words, this is my body, this is my blood. On uh, Holy Thursday, all of us priests, we have a priest luncheon at, at St. Thomas Aquinas in Dare, and we celebrate the gift of the priesthood. And also on Holy Thursday, that gift of service where the washing of the feet, where Jesus washed the feet of his 12 disciples. On Good Friday, the only day of the year when there is no Mass, because there is no consecration, there of course is the Good Friday service where we get to venerate the cross, the wood of the cross. When priests and deacons come in, they prostrate themselves. They empty themselves in, in, in their vocation, uh, serving the church, serving all of you, serving our God. But we each bring our own crosses and embrace the cross of Christ. And then that great Easter vigil where we go from the dark moment of Good Friday and we come into the light, the resurrection, that very moment of resurrection where the Lord offers us newness of life through all things through his very resurrection and he's drawing us to that newness of life. In our parish community, we have two members, Patima and Reed, who are going to be baptized, receiving their confirmation in First Eucharist at that Great Easter Vigil. And it would be great to have every seat in this church filled for the vigil, which we usually do. But please, if you haven't come, come and experience it. Um, all the baptized come in, and we have our candles, because we are a part of something bigger than ourselves. When we see all the illuminated candles of all the baptized Catholic Christians in this church, 
and then Patima and Reed will join us with their candles, recognizing the light that we can actually shed on the world as living as people of truth and as people of faith. And if you can't make it, of course, for the vigil, I'll see you on, on, on Easter Sunday morning as we uh, celebrate uh, the Lord's resurrection together. So may we realize that through this passion that the Lord exists in suffering. The Lord exists in our pain. And we only find him when we reach out, go beyond ourselves, get down and dirty, and enter into somebody else's chaos, or if somebody enters into ours. That's where we find God. That's where, how we learn how to truly love and truly care for one another recognizing that we band together in our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ in the hope of that promise of the resurrection which we will celebrate in just a few short days. And we stand together as one family in faith and we profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in trust and confidence, we bring our prayers and petitions to our loving Father that the Holy Spirit may sanctify the church in her observances of this solemn week. We pray to the Lord. Lord that God's exaltation of the name of Jesus may bring people of all nations to their knees. We pray to the Lord. Lord that God may not abandon the distressed, the dying, or those sentenced to death. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Jesus may journey together with us through the experiences of loss and sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all who have died and for all that died today, especially for Pat Trongo and for Mr. and Mrs. Jean Valley, for whom this Mass is offered, that their souls and all of the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace for eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all the prayers on our prayer line and for those that we voice in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord we ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? Number 485.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. So that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all of the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Mark, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us turn to one another and offer the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Take up his 